cyber security level. Central Bank of Nigeria directs financial institutions to charge 0.5% on transactions. I am Bola Oba, and this is Plus Politics. The Central Bank of Nigeria on Monday directed banks to begin charging 0.5% cybersecurity levy on electronic transactions. A circular released by the APES Bank on Monday said the implementation of the levy will begin two weeks from the day of its announcement. The circular was directed to all commercial, merchant, non-interest, and payment service banks. Following the enactment of the Cybercrime Prohibition Prevention ETC Amendment Act 2024 and under the provision of Section 44.2a of the Act, a levy of 0.5%, equivalent to a half percent of all electronic transa transactions valued by the business specify the second schedule of the act is to be remitted to the National Cyber Security Fund, which the Office of the National Security Advisor shall administer. Quote, the levy shall be applied at the point of electronic transfer origination, then deducted and remitted by the financial institution. The deducted amount shall be, shall be reflected in the customer's account with the narration Quote, cyber security levy, unquote. He said, quotation continues, deductions shall commence within two weeks from the date of this circular for all financial institutions and the monthly remittance of the levies collected in bulk to the NCF account domiciled at the CBN by the fifth business day of every subsequent month. Speaking on penalties for non-compliance, the bank said that failure to remit the levy is an offense and is liable on conviction to a fine of not less than 2% of the annual turnover of the default, def defaulting bank, amongst others. Johnny Noss is a cybersecurity instructor and cloud security analyst on Oné Obazi Aqua. Also joining us is communications consultant and, me, and mediator Akifa Tunke and Serap Deputy Director Kolawole Oluwadare. Gentlemen and lady, at least for those of you who are presently live with me, welcome to Plus Politics. Thank you very much. They say ladies first. Uh, let's start with you, Anone. What contextually would be your definition of cybersecurity to an average person watching and who is wondering why would my money be deducted because, uh, because there is a law that says uh, financial institutions and cyber transactions should be protected in Nigeria? Just basic explanation of what cybersecurity entails. On a can you hear me? Okay, thank you. Yes, I can hear you. Fantastic. So, um, the cybersecurity for anybody who does not understand what it is is simply being safe online. There are the methods you use, tools that you use for internet safety. And you, you, you would see that in line with the definition, the short definition I just gave, why it is important for that type of levy to exist. Because with internet safety, through um, transactions... Go ahead, go ahead, we can hear you. Okay, so 
with the use of the internet security and such levy put in place, you would now see that that sort of thing is important, right? So that is basically what cyber security is, internet safety. So this levy is now taken to ensure internet safety, especially when it has to do with bank transactions. Thank you very much, Orene. Uh, I think it is imperative at this juncture that I make uh, a little confession. I, out of sheer, sheer enthusiasm, uh, went into studying cybersecurity. In fact, I have a Cisco, uh, Cisco badge on cybersecurity of a sort, and I'm still uh, going ahead. You know, but Orene mentored me into the introductory stage. In fact, she mentored me, literally mentored me, into my Cisco badge uh, on introduction to cybersecurity. That being said, she's there in her capacity as a cybersecurity uh, expert, instructor, and, uh, and a lady too. I particularly wanted a lady to also be involved in this. OK, let me go to uh, Mr. Fatunke. Uh, this is uh, another form of tax, and it does seem at this juncture, uh, Mr. Fatunke, that uh, the federal government of Nigeria is seemingly portraying itself to just be o Oliver Twist of a sort. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Bring it, bring it, bring it. Uh, how would you want to start, Mr. Fatunke? I will start by acknowledging the fact that uh, law should be law, but should be good laws. Secondly, uh, like Onome has um, enunciated, the cyber security thing is a must go to. It's something we must um, embrace. There's no doubt about that. And uh, for close watchers of happenings in the Nigerian economy, uh, you will agree with me that uh, so many untoward things have um, happened either to our currency, to our security architecture, towards um, the reason why we have um, gone down and continue to go down as a country in total out of sync with protocols that talks about the cyber security to which Nigeria, um, Helsinki declaration that towards to which Nigeria has um, assigned onto. So all good, nice, don't be and don't ring. The only challenge, of course, is timing uh, because when. Uh, the President Goodluck Jonathan's administration signed that act into law, the enactment of the cyber security for um, prevention of uh, the Amendment Act of, actually, actually of 2024, now that we have in 2025. There were reasons that were given at that time that um, we were on one way streets, but now that uh, we now have a hope agenda. It's now like, uh, well, high time that um, we clean our stable. But in doing that, we needed to uh, proceed in haste, but slowly. Uh, because um, in trying to do that, we have a situation where the holy poloi, the vast majority of people uh, don't have the confidence and the trust in government that they were going to do what uh, did not happen at one point in time, even though we have new sheriff in town. For instance, um, the question is, does the Central Bank of Nigeria have the absolute power to enact that um, act and instruct banks and financial institutions to begin to now pay 0.5% again, some other controversy is this 0 0.5? Mr. Fatunke, Mr. Fatunke, I, yeah. I guess the, as it is, the Central Bank of Nigeria is only an enforcing agency. 
an enforcement well. agency of a sort because the law was enacted by the National Assembly in February. I just wonder why the law was, uh, was not spotted at the level of, um, uh, of the legislative, uh, you know, when it was still in the legislature. I wonder why it was not, uh, and I wonder whether a, a proper public, uh, public this thing was done for the law. But the president signed it into law. And at this juncture, the Central Bank of Nigeria is only an enforcement authority. Uh, it is obvious to most Nigerians that uh, it is obvious that most Nigerians don't quite like the law to be um, implemented at this point, maybe because of the myriad of other uh, scorching circumstances that they are facing. But the law is the law. And the central bank as an enforcement authority, uh, how would you uh, respond to that before I go back to to Onone? Yeah, the law is the law, and Bola, the law is made for man. I'm not man for law. And uh, if you have a law that is not properly by way of interpretation um, carried out. It, it, it will get into a bit of a topsy turvy. My point is, which one comes first, chicken or egg? Yes, you are very correct. And um, if you slept on your right, if you slept on your responsibility, then um, you are aligned with that with that law. But in implementing, it's just like saying that you want to interpret um, a law that has been have been set out. I am not entirely sure that. Uh, that law is not at variance with the ground law, uh, with the ground law of the Federation. Because if you look at uh, Section 162 of the Nigerian Constitution, it was clear as regards how levies and taxes are supposed to be aggregated and should be going into a particular pot that should be shared amongst tiers of government. So if you have an act that is now giving vent um, to the central bank are now saying, yes, you should collect some of these levies when it's the banks who collect, pay to central bank and go to now be paid um, for the... Uh, in, summary, in summary, before I leave you, in summary, you're saying that uh, all revenues, all revenues generated by the federal government of Nigeria should ordinarily go into the federation account and the Federation account belongs to not only the federal government, but the federal government and the, fe the, the federating units and, and the local government and the local and, government. And, 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 the, and the local government. And, you know, so, that but, law uh, in you Section will agree 2 with says there is absolutely uh, nothing you should do. Anything, any law, any enactment that you have that does not go with the ground norm, is likely to be but until, uh, until that is, I'll come back to you, but be brooding about this. Until that is litigated by an entity that has locals, you and I can be ideating on it in the public as we are doing, but until a state government or a local government goes to court to challenge the degree to which that law is inconsistent with the revenue architecture defined in the constitution, that law will still, uh, will still be enforced as it has okay. been uh, well, so there, announced. There's also a law, there's also a law that says that um, um, you are free to go jump in the lagoon. There are people that will say, hey, I'll wait come, a minute, jumping into the lagoon becomes an issue. <laughs> becomes I'll, I'll come back to you. So, let me go to like you. I said, let me go to your call. Let me go to man and not man for law. Onone, are you there? Yes, I can hear you. Fantastic. Onone, my basic understanding of cyber security and looking at it contextually uh, from the perspective of the CIA tried. Uh, that is the confidentiality, integrity, and availability, I want to believe that the points of, uh, the points of vulnerability 
the points of exploitation are more on the side of the individuals in this respect, if you look at this scenario, than the banks. We seldom get to hear in Nigeria that the banks were directly <coughs> defrauded. Oh yes, they do. But the preponderant majority of cyber security exploitations that we read about are basically things, people who are vulnerable to social engineering. When people protested them, when people uh, took them to, to give information that under no circumstance they should share with anybody and all their accounts get wiped out. So from this point, this law is heavily tilted in favor of a government agency and the banks. What good is this law? Maybe you will help me as my mentor in cybersecurity. What good is this law going to be to an average individual functioning with a digital device in our society and using that di digital device to, to conduct his or her uh, you know, financial and banking uh, services. You want to give us some illumination on, on what seems to me to be, this law is a bit wacky. Okay, thank you very much for that. So, we have been told, the public has been told that we are going to be charged cyber security levy and all those things. So, I think what we deserve as citizens would be a very clear understanding of what this levy will be used for right and um, we, we could look at things like governments could look at things like cyber security awareness programs you know you could say that yes this is what the levy is going in for so i am not collecting the levy i don't know what exactly it's being used for but if it is being used this uh, and, it, and it's a few ideas on what it should be used for and strongly i still stand on we as citizens should know what the levy is being used for yes the, we are going to we are going to be charged for cyber security and what how exactly is this going to be used will we get awareness campaigns on our phones because you can see applications like true color once in a while, Chocola sends you notifications telling you, um, giving you cyber security tips. I got one not too long, a few hours ago, saying that, okay, if you get information that you should send so, so, so amount to a charity um, center, you should always confirm. So have things like this been put in place that, okay, from the collection of this cyber security level, this is what is going to be used for? Because it's going to go a very long way. And not just in the aspect of focusing on specific you know, languages, it, it would go a long way if it goes as far as going into different languages like uh, the Igbo, uh, Kaudai, Yoruba. You, you seem to, Anana, you seem to have touched on another very, uh, very major issue. Uh, that, that's the issue of transparency and accountability. We have a law now that primarily empowers the, the, the Central Bank of Nigeria to instruct all financial institutions to deduct people's monies, and that ultimately, uh, by the fifth, or not before the fifth of the following month, the money will, must be passed to the Central Bank, and the Central Bank will then forward 40% of it to the Office of the National Security Advisor. We don't know, as you rightly stated, in a much more responsible, much more accountable and democratic society, we don't know what that phone, that enormous phone, because the last electronic, the, the last volume on record for electronic financial transactions was around 600 trillion naira. So 0.5% of 600 trillion naira, we'll be speaking to about three. Three, 3 trillion naira. And 3 trillion naira, even if you give 40% of 3 trillion naira to an agency of government that is not even defined constitutionally as a revenue 
a collecting agency that in itself is an incongruity, constitutional incongruity. But apart from that, if that money goes to that agency, the easiest lingo we get to hear from our securocrats, people who function in the security industry, in the Nigerian security crisis, uh, you know, issues of security is not something to be discussed in public. And, <laughs> and trillions get passed under, you know, get spent or expended without much accountability. So from what you've said now, and given the contextual question I, you know, I posed to you that the level of vulnerability is actually more pronounced at the level of the citizens. What's your take of this law, Onane? Okay. Um, well, I think that the I still stand on the mandate that, in as much as we are vulnerable, it would only do everybody right to serve everybody right. Both parties would um, ad, would take and would be able to benefit from this in large in a large number of way if the levy is used for the right reason, and not just the right reason, but strategic reasons where they are collaborating with cybersecurity industries to be able to make the citizens who are paying this levy not to be vulnerable, not to be more vulnerable in this um, in this act. Okay, uh, Mr. Fatunke, you, you, you seem to, uh, Mr. Fatunke, you seem, yes. if, I, if I've understood you well enough, uh, to agree with the fact that the imperatives of the time actually necessitate the fact that uh, any responsible uh, government must look into the issue of cybersecurity. But it does seem that you don't believe that this is the appropriate time to start uh, implementing this levy. Uh, Mr. Fatunke, are you there? Very much here, Gola, and um, to make and uh, to restate my position, there is absolutely nothing wrong in we aligning into the cyber security um, protocol. Uh, I mean, it's going to be good. I'm um, started by telling us um, many of the advantages, and then you talk about uh, a lot of collusion that goes on in the banks. Let the banks open their books. And let them tell you um, the kind of fraud that that goes on. So the problem is not so much with the enactment, even though, uh, yes, I agree that we might have stepped on a law. But that's not the only furor. Part of the other furor is the ruler balu of the wrong timing that you mentioned, and, and giving due consideration. Oh, to that the you situation. that you mentioned uh, that you mentioned, and that I kind of that I kind of uh, took note of. There is also <laughs> wrong there's, there's an insinuation of wrong interpretation, where you begin to have a law that is not so clear. At one point in time, in fact, I was reading somewhere that some people were even saying that they didn't quite understand 0.5% of, of, of half of Mr. Fatunke, which rightly Mr. is Mr. Fatunke, in, in computation. That is one. There is also a duplication, Bola, and this must be very clear. There is also a duplication in saying that this particular, this particular act that we are talking about is also, there is an existing assembly, you know, a charge of about 0.25% already on profit. So, why is this coming now? Even if it's going to come, like Onoma said, it should be clearly stated. If you are a blind and a, a lame or, or deaf, one of you must be whistling when you are coming together as a joint venture to want to roast ticket, um, to roast uh, ground nuts. We went through this route before, and we okay. knew uh, where uh, we uh, were uh, uh, Mr. I have not been able to uh, establish hello, hello, Mr. Uh, establish okay. for myself that... Uh, hello, uh, hello, hello, Mr. Fatunke, I need to... The academic condition is still right for us to be able to go hello, there. Hello, Mr. Fatunke. 
Can you hear me? Yes. I need to put this to you. I was hoping to put it to uh, the representative of Serap, who, yes. uh, who is scheduled to be uh, part of the panel tonight. But I wouldn't right. know why right. the gentleman can, uh, can make it. Right. However, right. I am sitting here wondering, we have we have legion of journalists in this country. We right. have we have an army or college of lawyers. We have CSOs, civil society organizations. And at the point when this law was still a bill and was being deliberated upon at the National Assembly, and even the fact that the previous law, that this law is supposedly, supposedly, uh, you know, amend, have amended, that previous, previous law stated 0.005%, which is not the same thing as 0.005%. No, on value of transactions. Oh. You see, this, this, this were not properly defined. There are lacunas in that act, obviously. But, but the law okay. is the law. We must, we, I must still, I know it may sound irritable to you or somewhat exasperating to you, I understand, and I empathize with you, but it, it is also my job to let you and those watching know that as in Congress, as absurd as the law seems to be, it is now a prima facie law in Nigeria, and the central bank is within its yes, <laughs> within yes. its and, executive and, 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 duty. And the only challenge with me on that is that you must put it within context. So, in 2015, the law came into being. In 2024. The architecture of the Nigerian economy did not envisage some of the things that we are already experiencing. For instance, that law at that point in time did not envisage that we are going to be having an harmonized tax committee that is looking at multiplicity of laws. Yes, that law is there, it's always been there, but it should also by way of what I remember what was trying to say, there, there has to be a consumer, you know, a consumer interface. Now things are a bit changed. Things are changed because the overtaxation. And on the policy side, unfortunately, we have situations where the present government boldly are embracing reforms. But those reforms are already turning back a lot of hardship both on business and human beings. That will not be the time, uh, the timing that you are talking about, that you now want to bring that law of 2015 uh, that has its own lacuna. I agree with you, Bola, quite right. If we slept on our rights at that time, we are no more sleeping. We are now awake. And we need to begin so, to so for you, for you is better. Right. For you, it's better late than never. It's better late than never. Okay, let, let me go to let, let me go to Onone Obazi Aqua. Onone, I cannot yes, can. I cannot I'm but dig deeper into uh, issues of uh, issues of security of information. Uh, I've spoken earlier on to the CIA chart, but we know that in uh, network network management. Uh, you, you're looking at uh, issues of fault tolerance, scalability, uh, and ultimately security. And even when you get to security, you want to speak to the security of the infrastructure and the security of the information, which are two, uh, two legs of uh, cyber security as it relates to uh, uh, networking management and uh, and stuff like that. And I'm sitting there, I'm thinking, okay, and I'm posing this to you because you are my cybersecurity mentor. 
you know, uh, and I'm sitting and I'm thinking, on oh, no, the fact that many of the exploitations, cybersecurity exploitations that we read about, especially in the Nigerian financial services industry or sector, are somewhat, are somewhat concocted by people who function within that industry. So, uh, you know, if you're speaking to, if you're speaking to uh, social engineering, you will discover that some of the pretesting that we tend to get as users or as customers of the bank, some of the pretesting tend to have internal elements of the bank who give the pretester our, you know, our banking details. Somebody will call you, tell you your name, give you your bank account, tell you the this thing, and, and the person will seem almost convincing that the person works at your bank. Some people have been pretested to uh, exploitation like that. Forget about that. You even want to go into intra-banking frauds. You also discover that unlike instances of tailgating, uh, tailgating, and this thing, people really function. Uh, you, you, are, you are laughing that your you are laughing that your mentee is uh, is seemingly you know getting okay. Thank you. I really have to thank you. You know, uh, but having said that, how does somebody like you, a cybersecurity expert, tend to believe that this kind of levy would help? to extricate or exfiltrate, if I may use cybersecurity terminology, exfiltrate these elements, these human points of vulnerability from the system. What, what would be your suggestion to that? Okay, thank you for that. So these are physical threats. Okay. Right? These are threats that are inside the organization. You would call them insider threats in cybersecurity. And one would say that a very close way to do this is to typically, how, what, 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 how would I put this? Um, what, how would I put this? I don't know how people feel it, but for situations like this, when there's insider threats, going over employees, and their systems is very essential. That is why you see situations where specific organizations or generally organizations that have cybersecurity in mind, one of the things that they do is that you would have specialized gadgets for whenever an employee comes into the organization and leaves the organization. And then there's also something uh, um, called least privilege and that has to do with limiting the access that certain employees have so in situations like that you could say that if there is a particular time that employees should have access to a certain type of data or information there should be something put in place that while that employee Oh, is, is the network, uh, is the network mm -hmm. choking uh, on and out? Okay, let me go to uh, Mr. Fatunke. Mr. Well, Fatunke. That, that might be fishing, fishing, fishing. On and will come back. No, okay. Are you back, on and Okay, uh, okay, okay, on and you, you see, you, you see what you have cost now. I, I, yes, I, I was going to say that uh, people knew what we were going to say and they have had deal up front, really. Uh, if, okay, I mean, now, part, part, part of the issues, uh, Bobola, on, on a more serious note, again, this cyber security protocol is needed like yesterday. Absolutely no doubt about that. But the, to, the today, which was the tomorrow we were thinking about yesterday, found us in terms of financial inclusion, whereby we have 
about 10 ban charges already being meted out now, of which this particular one will be another one. Look, the other point again is that, in fairness, there are assisting items that are exempted, and it's uh, great, great thoughts, and the way it should go. Sweetness, it affects virtually everybody, because if you really look at this act, Properly. Yes, it's like we should have to find a way to Let me give it. you... Uh, uh, hello, you hello, Mr. Fatunka. Mr. Fatunka, let me give you uh, the, seeming, the seeming ambiguity and the, uh, the seeming uh, nebulity of some of those exceptions. Now, one of those exceptions speaks to waiver for salaries. But I know that as you are, you are a retiree. You may be earning wages, but you no longer earn salaries. You know, now, majority, majority of Nigerians who function in the informal sector earn wages, but no salaries. So their wages automatically will be subjected to the deduction of the levy and yet, the minority of Nigerians who function as salary earners, you, you see how, how that law was not properly thought over because we, we, as we speak, a preponderant majority of Nigerians function in the informal sector. And in they the don't earn salaries, sector. but they no, earn wages. In, not just in the informal sector. Don't let us even talk about the erosion uh, as a pensioner. As a pensioner, the erosion is massive. Headline inflation. Inflation, of inflation is already decimating or uh, practically. Food inflation in, in excess of 40%. But let's even look at inclusion. Let's even assume, economic say that it's a terrorist Let's even assume. As at the time when this law was stated, the drafters of the law realized the fact that even though things might have improved now, 71% of financial penetration in urban areas, 40% in rural areas, they don't even know what internet is, just, just mention it. Added on to the very great point that you have also raised, in the informal sector. And so you are going to have to be very, very careful how you are going to differentiate to ensure that the people, the scums of the arts, are not pressed and further pressed downwards. And as a t at a time that we have a minister for, uh, you, you know, uh, for energy shouting that if we do not raise tariffs in electricity, he has a point, but then at the same time, are we not putting cats above the horse? I have a feel, I have a feel, and that is the perception out there, that government's rise on data is for just revenue generation, because things are not moving in the right direction. Don't forget also, we also have some duties, and there are more things that we have in our statute books that government decides that they are going to wake up and they are going to begin to do, why don't we wait? Why don't we look at what the committee is going to come up with? Why will we make such a pronouncement again against the tenants of the ground norm, section 162, subsection 1 and subsection 10, and just give it to the national security advisor? I have no problem with Mr. Nuhu Ribadu. I think Mr. Nuhu Ribadu is beginning to show good signs with what he's doing with P2P, with what he's doing with Binance, great. But however, he needs to move a bit slowly because his predecessors in office did on to, to, to be fair, to be fair to, to, to be fair to the national security say. advisor, uh, he was not the one that enacted the law. We, he was not the one that enacted the law, but in his shoes, in his shoes, no, I would be Let's I will raise my hand, I will raise my hand and say, if this is against known laws, if that is, I mean, if it counters a particular okay, law, let me, let me check, I will let insist. Let me check if Onene is back. 
let's do the, to, the right thing in the right way so that at least morally speaking, ethically speaking, I, I have the moral justification to do a lot of the things I need to do. Oh, oh, let, 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 let me check if on the are you back? Yes, I'm back. Uh, you see, when you, when you had that disruption, I was thinking, you see, uh, if, uh, if, if, your, if the UDP protocol that is connecting you with the studio was, was good enough, and uh, <laughs> you see how technology make it a, man, make it a man almost crazy. I was thinking uh, if the UDP protocol was good enough, and you know, it gives priority to, to video and audio above uh, this thing, we shouldn't be having that, uh, that. Okay, Anona, we are where we are now. And I want to believe that people like you should be smiling now, kind of, I should be seeing some smile in faces of uh, cybersecurity experts like you because uh, a new pot of soup is practically, forget about the fact that uh, the likes of Fatunke, we will kick the, they will kick against it. Serap has stated that they will soon be litigating on it. The NLC uh, reasonably believes that this is further impoverishment of the Nigerian public but I'm looking at, you see, <laughs> uh, cyber security experts are seldom paid well in Nigeria. Maybe this will raise up. They may not be, you know, not as much as, say, United States of America or in, in Europe, but at least you don't get to pay cyber security uh, experts 120,000 naira. You know, sometimes many of the people concocting the mischiefs from the bank. Uh, in, there may even be people who employed to be cyber security and experts who, who were not who paid well, just thinking aloud. What would be your response to that? Okay, thank you. So, undoubtedly, for cyber security professionals like myself, we're happy that there is a levy like this. Yes, we are excited to see that the government wants to put more security policies and practices in place to safeguard the transactions of the citizens in the country. But we let's not turn a blind side to the fact that I will still go down on transparency, that as this levy has been taken, right, as this levy has been taken and it should be used for the right things, to make the citizens satisfied for what they're going to be paying for. Um, because it would not be nice if they're collecting such a percentage. You know, it was 0.05 percentage, which would have been still okay to tackle the cybersecurity issues. But there must be there must have been a reason for the 0.5 percent. And cybersecurity professionals, speaking on behalf of myself and for the lot that I spoke to before I joined this session, we really hope to see that there is more security in the transactions of citizens moving forward. You, 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 you really hope that there is more security or you really hope that the lajes, the anointing oil will flow from the head, the Office of National Security Advisor, and flow down <laughs> to the professionals. I just, I'm, I'm just going, thinking I'm going, sign, I, I'm going to I'm going to put um, a caution here, Onome. Um, cyber security experts like you, uh, the capacity has been there. In fintech, just mention it. Yes, again, because we've not been doing things rightly, there's been a lot of japa, and you are making your money the way you should make your money. However, if it is not properly managed, Yes. You'll find yourself like the medical doctors and the nurses of this world. The money is going to be there. It's going to be properly mismanaged. It will not dovetail down to you in ways and manners that we know that our armed forces for the past 15, 15 years keep on crying. 
a lot of money coming into security, but it's not getting down, down there. And those are the protocols that we are all talking about now. We must ensure, and I'm happy that you are saying that a young uh, lady like you is saying exactly, uh, exactly that. It's not yet to who. We must, at the end of the day, this is for you to make sure that the transparency, the three trillion, I want somebody to tell me that three trillion, what are you going to spend it on? When the Abacha loot came back, we also have a look, came back, they said we're going to use it for so certain infrastructures. And suddenly along the line, we had very little, it became very opaque. We removed the fuel subsidy. Uh, uh, Mr. Fatunke. We did not tell ourselves those truths. Uh, because Fatunke. we are not telling the truths to ourselves, because we, the, the, the audience table is not very, very clear. Uh, Mr. Mr. Fatunke. Uh, if, yes. If we were to go by the antecedents, uh, in that particular industry or in that particular yes. sector of our society or sphere yes. of our society. That's the securocracy, the security yes. uh, ecosystem. Yeah. Accountability is one thing that is very lacking. Accountability and transparency, very lacking. Uh, I remember some about a decade ago or a little over a decade ago, a particular chief of army staff was reportedly by one of the one of the intelligence papers that leaked in the WikiLeaks uh, this thing was said to be a multi billionaire many times over and the american intelligence community wondered how he garnered such resources I'm sitting there now in view of uh, uh, the, the passion that I've seen you commit to uh, wanting, desiring accountability and also the fact that the cybersecurity professional on the, on the show, Onone Obazi Aqua, uh, he's also emphatic that there must be well-defined programs. I'm sitting there now wondering, we perhaps we go the same, same of the shame way, you know, same of the shame as in there will not, there, there won't be proper accountability for the money. The money will just be some people's. Uh, I, I'm thinking aloud. Is your show? Go ahead. What would you, I would yes. like to respond to? You are thinking properly. Uh, I mean, for the life of me, I'm an accountant, and of course, uh, issues surrounding security is not altogether um, stranger to me. Uh, where um, I batted my career, we started SAP. We started SAP in this country, and we got, and Nigerians, you will not believe it, Nigerians. Back then, I'm talking about close to about 20, 25 years, we we're on top of the game, ahead of South Africa, ahead of Egypt. But then we all got just found ourselves in a mild clay because we started seeing people putting money in septic tanks, we started seeing, uh, we started seeing monkeys and crocodiles swallowing money and all that kind of thing. <laughs> If we had gone that uh, way uh, before, uh, let me let me go. Tell you, uh, uh, let me let me go to let me go to Onone now for a wrap up. Onone, yes, um, you. you know, in the last couple of months uh, since I have started my cybersecurity course and given uh, the Cisco badge that I have now, one day I just went on Indeed. And I checked what people at my level get to earn in, say, United Kingdom and, say, United States of America. And I'm wondering if I was to be, if I were younger, if I don't have some other legacy projects that I'm facing in Nigeria, if I, if, say, if I was 30 years younger, I probably would have jackpot too, because I see figures, you know, at the level of Cisco Intermediate Cybersecurity uh, Certification, you are looking at an average of about 100 to 120,000 US dollars. 
per, per annum. And, and, and you are one, and you know, th there was a time I had a conversation with you, and cyber security professionals are still paid in Nigeria, say, 120,000, 140,000 naira, even in some banks, less than 200,000 naira. And one is wondering, so, but in view of this, what, what's your best, most optimistic uh, hope or, or wishes? We are in the government of renewed hope. Maybe let me throw the hope ball to you and see how you play it back to me. <laughs> what's your best hope in view of this uh, accentuation of the importance of cybersecurity as, uh, as something that is very important in the age uh, in, in the dig dig digital age. Okay, so um, to the start of, first of the start, the start of how much cyber security professionals are being paid. Now, you would look at um, these stats and when you take a look at these com the companies paying such cyber security professionals that sometimes you note that it depends on the organization to be a private sector and that is what they've chosen to pay their cyber security um, staff now if we're now looking at the hope of this levy we can see programs like in, this is in line with um the possible things that the government can do with the cyber security levy right we can see things like um, what the director of the digital, um, sorry, what the minister of communication, innovation, and digital economy is already doing with the three MTT program and talking about cyber, bringing more people into cyber security and educating them in that aspect. So, if with the levy that is collected, oh, the I, cyber security I, 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 let, let me let me have, take. Let me, uh, let me take the time to accentuate the point you've just made now. Uh, in, in okay. the, uh, we know that the Ministry of Communications and Innovation has a number of programs for the skills empowerment of many of our, you know, many of our youths in the area of uh, programming, uh, in the area of, uh, across the value chain of uh, information technology skills. And uh, we know that uh, this kind of program is what you envisage that the Office of National Security Advisor would replicate uh, with, with a view to getting more youths to have cyber security skills and you know, get certified and populate the army of, uh, I, I don't want to speak uh, this in, but I was going to say white art, uh, some gray art, and depopulate, depopulate the, the black art uh, actors. I hope I got you right. Yes, you got me right. And um, moving to the cybersecurity levy now and the collection of it. So it's not just going to be empowering these people to bring them to have the cybersecurity skills, right? And I think if we're now going to look at it in this aspect of hope, like where I was driving to, if organizations can also increase the amount of pay that cyber security professionals are giving and also the government putting in place infrastructures that are setting up cyber security infrastructures as well something that okay when cyber security professionals are being put in those infrastructures they are paid well and then they are assigned to various organizations from the government okay the uh, government uh, 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 because uh, uh, the uh, uh, this is where we have to wrap it up uh, let me also say thank you to uh, Mr. Fatunke. Uh, it's been a very interesting, very interesting show. I was a bit wheezy before we started because uh, the two of you, in many respects, are mentors to me. Uh, Mr. Fatunke has been 
for almost uh, two decades now, at least well over a decade, a good uh, brother, friend, mentor. Uh, on on air, it's not about the age, I may be twice or more your age, but uh, you mentored me into uh, some degree of expertise in cybersecurity and I'm still pursuing it to the level of uh, being a cybersecurity consultant. Uh, that is where I'm going. Uh, thank you, lady and gentlemen. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Uh, this is where we wrap it for today. And uh, I wish you a wonderful Thank you very day. much. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much, Gola. I was, I was, I was, I, uh, Anone may not have the, the, the nerve to say this, but if, when I look at your cap, well, I mean, there, there is a mentorship in that I cap. I am. I am beginning to accept. Bola <laughs> Oba. Have a good evening.